Hey, this is Bruce, and in this video, we're going to look at how to fetch data from our database and display it in our web app. Once you have your database set up for the chat app, the next thing will be to bring the information into your application. So you probably have a users table, and you can see my table is called Marmalade Users. Marmalade's the name of my app. Um, and I've pre-populated it with, uh, one, with four users um, with uh, their full name, username, uh, password, that is a hash of the password um, or encryption, um, emails, their favorite color, and you can see I've got some timestamps from a couple of days ago when I actually created it. If we take a look at the structure of the, uh, the application, right? Um, it's probably similar to what you have. So you can see here is my uh, file called Marmalade. So this is where my chat app resides. Inside there, I've got four pages, an index page, just uh, kind of an introduction. I've got a login page. I've got a messages page, which is going to be the main part of the application where we can send and receive messages. And I've got a sign up page uh, where users can sign up. So what we're going to look at today is the messages page and how to list out the users that are available to chat. If we look in the app folder, you can see I've got some PHP files. So uh, sign up, um, log in, um, list the users, read messages, and then obviously to send messages. What we're concerned with is the list users. So you can see here, I've created a connection to the database. I've defined my table as Marmalade users, so it's the same as the table we were looking at here. I've written a query that's going to select the user ID, the username, and the color from the, uh, from the database. And then I'm using prepared statements in order to prepare, execute, and store uh, the results from the query. Once I get those results, I'm binding them to uh, variables. So you can see the user ID it gets bound to a user ID variable here. Username gets bound to username and color gets bound to color. Once I've got that, I create an array and then I put the data into an array. So for each user, it's going to loop through and assign the user ID for that user. So in this case, it's user one. It's going to sign a username, so in this case it's Bruno, and it's going to assign uh, the color to the, the element in the array, and it'll go, go through and do that uh, for cocktail, so it'll assign user ID 3, uh, cock the tail for um, the username, and cocktail's favorite color is green. So if we run that file, you can see here Right? It's under Marmalade and App and List Users. Then we should see the JSON that gets returned. So you can see here I've got four users. So Bruno, Cocktail, Johnny, and JDOT, um, along with their user IDs and their colors. So what we want to do is to fetch this information and bring it into our application. And to do that, we're going to use the Fetch API or Application Programming Interface. And we are going to write that in JavaScript. So you can see here, um, we've got the, the PHP and I've got a JavaScript set up where we can fetch the users. And I've got a page here um, where we can display those users. So to use the Fetch API, I'm going to go and type in Google uh, Developer Fetch. And then the first result that comes up is the introduction to fetch. And if we click on here, we can see um, that fetch is replacing AJAX or XML HTTP request, and which has been very popular for years. Uh, so we can, they have, the first example is an uh, AJAX or XML HTTP request. And the second example is a simple fetch request, which will be perfect for what we're going to do today. So I'm copying that code. And I'm going to come over here. You can see I've got my messages.js set up. 
And oh, let me assign it right now while I'm here. So script. And source is going to be equal to js slash messages.js. And let's upload that. And you can see here I've got a little console log just to make sure that that's working. And so if we come back here and do an inspect and refresh and check the console, we will see that it is indeed loading. Um, and now we should be able to copy in that fetch command. And um, instead of fetching an API in some JSON, we're going to be linking to the um, app, right? So it's the name of the folder here, and the name of the file is list underscore users.php. So th the way this works is we call fetch. And then, right, so we can see it's chained um, on to the end of this statement. We could put it up here, um, but then it makes it a little harder to read. It's better if we indent. So we, we call the fetch, and then we wait until we get a 200 response. So it's a good response from the server, and then it returns. And then we take that response and put it as JSON, and then we call a, an anonymous function um, with the data that we receive from the listusers.php, and we'll just put that into the console if everything works well. So let's upload this, come back to our messages page, and refresh. And you can see here now, it's listing out the JSON. Let me just make this a little bit bigger for you. So it's listing out in JSON the information that is um, in the database that we've queried. So we can see the user ID, username, and a color for each one of those users. So the next question is how do we take this information in JSON format and get it to display on our page? So what we're, what we're going to do is create a a section on our page called a users so section and we're going to set the ID to users and if all goes well then the this paragraph should get replaced and we should see the users here so let's go back to our uh, JavaScript. So we're going to create a constant because this is not going to change. And we're going to make it the user section, users section. That's odd, but whatever. Um, and we're going to then uh, use a query selector to select that section that we just created. And the idea of it was users. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create a function. We're going to pass into that function um, the data that we've received. So let's come down here and we'll do function display users. And we'll set the parameter for the data that we're receiving. And then curly braces to open up our function. Um, so what we want to do is, first of all, we'll just make sure that there's nothing in it. So users section, uh, inner HTML is equal to nothing. And the next thing we're going to do is create a loop to be able to loop through all the information uh, that's there. So in other words, we're going to be looping through uh, the four users um, that are right now in our database. So we're going to use the data for each. And we're going to call another anonymous function. And we're going to pass in the parameter of the user. And then, so what we want to do is 
Well, let's, let's first just do a console log of user to see what we get. And it's showing me that I've got, I'm not quite sure how I, that happened. Um, I've got an extra brace. Oh, I see what's happened. Okay. Um, that should be down here, right? So I've got the for each and then I pass in the user. Okay, so now that we've got that straightened out, let's just call that function. So display users and we'll pass in the data. And so now we can see from line 29, we're getting the individual um, users in uh, as a console. So to list them out, let's use anchor tags um, or A in order to make them linkable so that we can select them. We, there's lots of different ways of doing this, but let's try that. So we're going to create a, a variable or an object called A, and we're going, then we're going to use the document create element, making sure it's in quotes, um, in order to create that anchor. And then we want, what we want to do is set the inner HTML to be equal to the username. So it's user, right? As we could see here, when we um, created that parameter, we're passing the user information. And then the username is literally username, all one word, no capitals. So user, dot username and then we need to append that anchor or a to the user section and if we upload that then you can see now that we have those uh, users and we can see that they are in fact active um, links and if we do a quick little inspect, you'll see here that I've got um, line 39 of my CSS. I've said that inside the user section, the A's are going to be block elements. And that's why you see them on one line each. If yours are all lined up kind of like my footer is lined up down here, um, then, you'll, then you'll know why. So there are our users listed out on our page um, after using fetch from our PHP. Um, so you can see here, we've got the usernames, but we don't have their user ID. And the user ID is going to be helpful for us to select the users later. So let's come back in to our JavaScript and we're going to add that user ID. So, um, So we're going to set the attribute and I'm going to, so a data attribute is one that you can use to put any kind of information in. So we just we prepend whatever it is that we want to put with data hyphen and then we can put the, the name of the uh, attribute. And we want to set that to be to with user in small letters and ID um, in caps. And now if we refresh and inspect one of those users, we can see that we've got the proper user ID for every user. So next what we want to do here is to add an event listener so that when we click on one of the users, we select that user. We'll finish this up in a, another video once we see what it is that we need to do. Um, but for now, what we can do is we'll create that function called select user. And because it's a, an event, we'll put event there. Um, and for now, what we'll do is we'll console, uh, we'll, we'll log to the console, um, the ID that we've gotten from the data set. The easiest way is to do this. 
So th this can be a little bit complicated in JavaScript, but for this particular event, this refers to the A that received the action of clicking. So we want to do this. Um, data set allows us to have access to anything that has that data with a hyphen uh, prepended to it. And literally what we're looking for is the to user ID. And notice that data attributes cannot have capitals. So we, we put it on all small letters, which can be a little bit confusing, but that's why I've got it now. So if this works, um, when we click on a user, we should see in the console that user's user ID. So I clicked on uh, cock the tail with a user ID of three. If I click on JDOT, we can see the user ID of five is selected. And if I click on Johnny and Bruno, we can see their user IDs are uh, displayed in the console. So what we've done is used fetch in order to go and get the raw JSON from the database. Um, so if we take a look here, we can see this is the raw JSON that has the information. And then we display users. And in order to display elements on the page, we are first using a query selector to select the section where we want to put uh, those elements. So you can see here, I've got a section with an ID of user. And then inside that, what we're going, what we do is we create anchor elements and set the inner HTML of those anchor elements to be the username that we want to display to the user. And we also add a data attribute of the to user ID, because once we select these users, then that will be who we want to send the message to. After that, we add an event listener so that we can click on those users and then they become selected. And so now you can see if as I click on each user, their ID is appearing in the console log. In the next video, We'll use fetch to allow users to log in to our application, um, passing in the, the username and password so that we can verify that they so that we can verify that they exist. I hope this helps.